we're back with another episode of the Can Alta Hotels AJHL Coaches Show from the Sherwood Park Arena. I'm Dave Dawson, pleased to be joined by the uh, general manager and the head coach of the Okotoks Oilers, uh, Tyler Dice. Uh, Tyler, also the reigning coach of the year, uh, your team coming off 106 point season last year. Um, how would you describe kind of the ebb and flow of the 2018-19 season so far for your team? Well, you know, we we had a uh, you know a lot of our defensemen, and, and, and obviously with Riley Morris moving on and stuff. Uh, you know, we, we knew our forwards were going to be strong in here and we were going to have a little bit ups and downs and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, but I've been I've been pretty happy with uh, the way that we've been playing and stuff. Uh, you know, even at the beginning of the year, just kind of getting used to everything and, and getting everything kind of structured up. Uh, but it's been good. Yeah, you spoke about Riley Morris. Uh, you know, we have Nick Blankenberg, you have Carter Huber, Tanner Latterroot, a number of those turnovers, Jacob Bernard, Docker. Uh, what was that like on the general manager's side, assessing that heading into this season? And I guess it's hard to replace those kind of bodies, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. But, you know, we thought that we had a bunch of young guys coming in here um, that, you know, could it'd take some time and stuff. And they've it, they've been awesome here since the, uh, with the first bit of season here. And, uh, you know, we're pretty happy of what, where, where our team is right now. Uh, kind of a bit about uh, so you were the director of player development. You've been uh, head coach for three seasons now, general manager for two. Uh, kind of between all that roles, what um, – what draws you to being involved on the on the personnel side and being involved kind of the day to day working with the kids? What uh, what draws you to that? Well, it's just one of those things, you know. I, I grew up playing this game, and um, you know, I just like being around uh, people that have the same kind of passion that I did and and still do. And it's it's fun just working with with uh, different individuals and, and trying to make them better, uh, make them bit better individuals, make them better hockey players. And uh, I just enjoy what I do. We've talked a lot about in previous episodes and uh, the idea of how players choose to go junior A and then NCAA and kind of what that makes them into a person. Now, you spent some time in the SJHL, went the NCAA route, and for all intents and purposes, what it looks like to me, have lived a pretty fulfilling life. H have you kind of been the, on the other side of kind of what the AJHL and the junior A is trying to achieve right now in, in kids? And, and how would you describe how the junior A has made you into a better man going that route and now in this position you're at? Well, I think it's more in, the, in, in later in life for me, you know, like, uh, you know, my parents uh, hugely influenced me to, to go that, that, that route and stuff and go to school. And, and uh, you know, I had some interest when I was uh, playing in midget and stuff like that. But it's not when you're playing and stuff like that. It's after when you have that degree and stuff like that, that uh, – um, it just makes it, it's, it's a lot easier having that and then and having that behind you and nothing, you know, no one can take that away from you. You're a pretty educated man as well. I did some research on you, a Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Education, I believe a Master's in Psychology as well. How do all those make you into a more effective coach, a general manager, and a director of player development? Well, I just think, you know, it's, it's educating yourself and, and, and trying to make sure that, you know, you, you surround yourself with uh, not just, you know, the material to make be a better educator or be a better coach and, and uh, but the other thing is is surrounding yourself with good people that you know that help you have the same kind of vision and, and creating that uh, kind of philosophy and vision of what you want out of these student athletes. You got a guy uh, Austin Wong on your team when we talk about kind of the package of the way that a player would hope it would look uh, drafted by the Winnipeg Jets in 2018 and he's you know committed to an NCAA school and then now kind of in that route of just from what I understand, a really, really nice guy to have around. Is he kind of, I wouldn't say the ultimate team player without going a little bit too far there, but he's, is he kind of that kind of guy you want to build your team around? Oh, for sure. You know, I, I've known him for a long time. I've known the family for a long time. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that, that, you know, his brother went and played in the WHL. And obviously, you know, he had a kind of different aspirations of, uh, of doing something different. And, um, but he is, he, he, you know, he plays a hard game, he plays a physical game, and he plays the game right. Um, but the other thing is, is he's a super popular kid, you know, people like being around him. Uh, he's charismatic, and uh, he's just a great guy to be around. Let's look at the rest of your roster. Why don't we start with the forwards? They're pretty talent-heavy there. Obviously, many people are talking about Dylan Holloway and Quinn Olson, two guys we're going to see in the CJHL Top Prospects game. Uh, we'll start with those two. What's it like to coach those guys, and what kind of players are they to have around your locker room? Well, it's just like they're, they're super focused, right? They, they, they know what they want. Uh, they put 100% into everything that they're doing here. And, uh, you know, they're the hardest-working guys out in practice. 
uh, and they want to get better, and it's just fun. They're they're easy kids to t- uh, to coach, and you know our whole team is like that. They're just a focused group here. But uh, with those two, yeah, it's you know they just want to be the best, and and, and they work hard to be. Can maybe run down a few of your other forwards and guys that uh, maybe people may not be familiar with, or ones that you get to coach day to day and see the development, and maybe ones that you're seeing some growth out of as well. Well, for sure, you know, like there's there's new players coming in with Gib and. Uh, Gib Cody and uh, Jack Works and, and, and Dick, Carson Dick here. And, you know, those guys are, they're just doing a phenomenal job. And then we've got a young decor with a bunch of young defensemen that uh, are coming in. But, you know, we've got guys that have been here with Gordon and Wong being, you know, th- third year players here that are teaching these guys how to be professionals, how to, how to prepare right, how, what their preparation is and, and being accountable. And those are kind of things that we preach. Yeah, maybe on uh, defensively, uh, you touched on that a little bit. If there's anything else you want to elaborate there and uh, get into goaltending as well and kind of how you would evaluate each of those positions. Well, it's it's one of those things. You know, like last year we had definitely we had, you know, uh, with Riley here for the last three years and stuff like that. And, you know, we, we knew coming in that, uh, you know, we – we wanted to find that goaltending situation and you know with Sanders and and, and Parker here it's it, it's been great and uh it's just it's been good and, you know with our young defensemen they're just getting better and better and better and it, it's it's really cool to see All right so I've always been a fan I've said this a number of episodes before and in psychology so I'm glad that you do have a master's because I do believe that there is a component to understanding people and often when you get players in they want to set goals and you want to evaluate kind of their performance how much are you involved in determining a player's potential to set their goals or do they often have realistic goals in mind when they come to you well each player when they come in here we we set up a player development uh, profile and uh, we just go through a, a a variety of uh, questions and, and, and goals and, and things that they want to do academically, athletically, uh, things that they need to work on. Um, and then we just kind of go through that kind of process with these kids so that when they leave this program that they have some type of plan. And that plan changes, obviously, you know, over years and stuff like that. But we just always revisit it and, and make sure that these kids have something or somewhere that they, they want to achieve after, after hockey here. And that's... At, a lot of it is is the academic part of it and you know if athletics can can take you to to that next level and and help you then it's great what does that process look like when you're sitting down with a player uh, especially in today's world, I just had a recent uh, interview with Andrew Milne of the Canmore Eagles, a great discussion with him, talking about how it's, you coach players differently now in this generation, be it the way you, you kind of communicate or maybe the way you have to use digital information. How do you find how that has helped you and have you seen yourself changing the way you approach coaching certain players sometimes oh for sure you know it's definitely it changes all the time but the one thing that we you know with our organization that we really concentrate are are those intangible things you know it's the things that you can't always see and and it's not just and I know it's kind of one of those things that you know a lot of people say but you know if you want to play at the highest level hockey or you want to run a company or anything like that or you want to be in in management or or different things that you do it's those intangible things that you want to create in these young young men here to be better um and those are the things that we try is you know to push them harder um make sure that they're accountable make sure that they're professional in here so whatever you know the life you know they 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 get to experience if it's hockey or if it's it's business it just makes them better people and um and those intangible things are what gets them there is there one player and you've been around this oilers organization for a number of years on different levels is there one player that you can look at maybe who i I, you don't want to give that impression that they don't think that they can achieve their goals but you look at and be like it would be a a stretch for you to get to the spot where i know you want to be and you saw them just shoot through the stars is there somebody like that that you can maybe take a piece of and go that was a project player and boy do they ever achieve their goal well i think you know one of the 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 number one one that i can remember is is probably jacob um at the end of the day when we brought him in i you know i've coached him for a long time and and been with him and uh you know just the way that he he kind of developed into that next level of a hockey player it's just kind of flew off like he was always good but you know when you think about a kid that uh, comes into the league and 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 works his way and 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 gets into a you know a, a number or get drafted in the first round it's it's pretty remarkable but you know the one thing with him is he's, he was always focused you know it doesn't matter if it was in the gym or it was uh, his physics course or if it's hockey he's focused in everything he wanted to do there and he wanted to be better at it 
All right, so one last one for you. Maybe if there's one piece of advice to somebody who has played uh, the junior A level, you went through NCAA, you played pro hockey, you're in coaching, you know, you got an education. Is there maybe a piece of advice for other young coaches out there? Maybe somebody who just finished uh, university and kind of looking to find their way. Is, can you pass on some maybe life advice or some hockey coaching advice? Well, you know, the biggest thing for me is that, uh, you know, when, when I finished playing and stuff like that, I, and I was probably the most nervous I've ever been in my life. And, um, but I did have my education degree, but you know, my hockey development was probably the greatest development that I feel that, uh, you know, I, I, I learned how to start teaching skills and, and, and start skill teaching that skill development part. And, uh, and I still teach a lot of skill development. Most of my job is skill development uh, uh, with our with our uh, with our uh, development program. But uh, just learning that part, you know, when you come back and you play, and you're just like, well, you just do, and you know, you just shoot the puck like that, or you just skate like that. And I think the biggest thing was is, is getting that skill development piece and and really stripping the game down skills wise and, and and realizing you know how to do things and stuff like that. And I was I was very lucky to work with a lot of really good skill coaches. When I when I just finished and uh, and I learned a ton and then coaching just kind of fell in my lap. All right, well you've done a pretty good job at it, I might say. Uh, Tyler, thanks so much for joining me today. Best of luck the rest of the way. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Can Alta Hotels AJHL Coaches Show. We'll see you next time.